right, now that we have the base added onto the pot, we're going to peel the newspaper away and get, us, get some foam. And we're going to paddle. The first thing we're going to do is just paddle the base so that it sticks. That's all we're doing right now. My fingers are right where that, the wall of the pot meets the base of the pot. The goal of this demo is to show how various forms can be made just from this one particular form. So if I were to take this pot and put a handle on it, it's a perfectly acceptable mug. It works. But we can alter this form a lot by paddling. The next thing you want to do is get rid of this sharp line that happens when you paddle it on. And I'm going to paddle right on that line. And just keep in mind that the whole time you want to keep your fingers on the seam that you'll feel on the inside. So just by softening that, it changes the form a little more. If you notice, I'm turning the pot using the paddle. And I'm not hanging off of the edge. The pot is resting on the foam. Paddle it a little bit more, and it starts to soften the bottom of that form. And it's changing it. Every time you paddle it, you're changing that form. So now, that form has changed again. Of course, along the way, you have to let things set up. But that's a different form than it was just a few minutes ago. We're going to keep going with this, because on this particular form, I'm going to paddle it into uh, a rounded bottom that we're going to then add a foot ring to. Always look at your pots from all directions when you're working, upside down, sideways, because you never know what they can turn into. So you see, now I'm really getting this on an angle, creating that sort of point that I want, that cone point. And it keeps changing the pot. So it's starting to work. You see that dome start to happen. And now I really have to look at it from the top because this will tell me everywhere that's flat, everywhere that's sticking out, and I'll just paddle it around to get it back into the round. Now that I have the form that I want, I'm going to make a foot ring for the pot. So I've cut out a little square of clay from my larger slab, I'm just even, evening it out a little bit. And I also want the foot ring to have a pretty good thickness, because it has to support this whole pot. I find these biscuit cutters very handy tools to have in the studio. They come in a small circular size and a large circular size. They also come in many other shapes. You can usually get them at cooking stores. Uh, sometimes you can find them in craft stores in the, in the baking section. What I'll do is I'll just grab one of the rings and I'm trying to determine how to come up with the size of the foot ring. So I'll just set this on here and whichever um, circle template seems to nestle right there as sort of the, at the base diameter. That's the one I'm going to choose for the outer ring. I will cornstarch the slab because these are metal rings and they tend to stick. In my own studio I have a little container just filled with the cornstarch and I just dust it and sometimes you can dip that in. And I'll take my outer ring and cut. Pull that out. The next thing I need to decide is how high do I want the foot ring. I'm just going to roll that edge a little bit, soften it, and I will use my cloth to soften these edges because, again, it eliminates cleanup. You can also use a very thin piece of plastic if you don't have cloth. This is just a piece of pillowcase. The next thing I'm going to decide is how high do I want the foot ring. So I'll try a couple different circles in determining how high I want it. So I'll place this in the center of this. And whatever this measurement is becomes the height of the foot ring. I'd like the foot ring to be a little higher than that one. So I just take this and center it. I just do it by eye and press in and pull that off. Now to create the actual ring, you have to keep in mind that this foot ring 
has to go on a slant. So you want to set that up to get it in place. So I just made this little cone out of clay. And once we talk about circular templates, I'll show you how to make one of these. It's basically, a cone is just a circle with a piece of the pie cut out. And I'll take this, and I'll center that circle on the point of the cone and push down. And what this does is it gives me the foot ring, but it also sets up the slant that I need to go on to the curve of the pot. So I'll take the pot again, and I'll set it here, and pull this off, and set it right on top there, and center it. And then just take this and sort of snug it in so that it's nicely attached. I'm not attaching it. It's just setting it in place. I need to have this set up a bit before I can attach anything, because clay is a waiting game. You have to wait for it to get to the right consistency. The right consistency for attaching most things is leather hard, where the clay is still wet, but it doesn't move. The one thing that's really important is that you want to make sure that the edge, and I need to actually come down on this and make sure that I have it level. You want to make sure that the edge of the foot ring is not lower than the slope of your pot, because that's a mistake that you can make if you cut this inner ring out too wide. So I just have a little tool, and I kind of hold it up, and I can see that the slope is well under that. And the next thing is, because we have to wait for it to set up, I use these plastic grocery bags that I think we all we seem to multiply in our drawers. I want to keep the walls of the pot wet, but I want the base to set up, because I will alter this. And the only way to do that is to wrap part of it. I call it selective drying. So I'll just set this in here, and pull this up around. And just pull the plastic just around to where that bottom part is that I want to have set up. And then just clip it. All right, now that this has stiffened up, I'll unwrap my plastic. And just make sure that it looks pretty level. And because it's stiff enough now, I can actually flip this. It's not attached, but it's sticking enough. And that will help me see if I have that on there straight enough. It looks pretty good. I'm going to flip it back over. And I'm going to mark off where that foot ring sets on the pot. I use um, these uh, magic markers. They're water-based markers. And they give you a good line to look at. So I'm tracing the inside of that pot. And I'm also tracing the outside. And because this is placed right where I want it, I'll give myself little tick marks so that I can put it back on in that same spot, because I have to take it off to score it. Uh, you can get these markers in any craft store. Just make sure they're water-based, and make sure you test it, and make sure they fire out. That's important. So I've, marked, I've given this tick marks so that when I take this off and score it, I can place it right in that spot again so I don't have to worry about trying to find that right spot again. So I'm going to take this off, and we'll score. These demonstrations are really for any level of um, any level that you are in clay, because a beginner can take some of these techniques and play around with them, and someone that's more advanced can take them and push them a little further. But if you are a beginner, just remember that you have to slip and score everything, each side that you're attaching, kind of like epoxy. And I'll take this and set that on there. And I'm pushing it on there, shimmying it, and I'm letting that slip ooze out a little bit as I attach it. And I don't clean it up right now, I'll wait, because that slip forms a little coil. And I've never really had success adding 
coils to pots that are already leather hard. So I just started doing this, allowing the slip to set up. And I use a tool like this, and I'll go in and push that back into the seam once it's set up. And then flip this around and see how it's setting on there. And that's looking pretty good. Mm -hmm.